فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأصلي وأسلم على من على من أرسله الله رحمة للعالمين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وعلى وكتاب الورقات للإمام أبي معالي الجويني رحمه الله تعريف العلم والجهل The previous lesson we took the الأحكام uh, الوضعية We took two of them الصحيح and we took باطل We also took the difference between باطل and فاسد According to the uh, according to the ulama where they differ they distinguish between باطل and فاسد Inshallah ta'ala Today we're going to be talking about knowledge and ignorance. The Sheikh says, "Well, fiqh, fiqh is, fiqh is, a khassu min al ilmi. Fiqh is more specific than knowledge. It's more specific than knowledge. Meaning, fiqh is something which is more specific to a particular type of knowledge, and that knowledge, ilm, is more broader." The word ilm is more broader than the word fiqh. Are you all with me? Well, ilmu. So, so he told you at that point, well, fiqh. Fiqh is what? Is more narrow and more specific. Whereas ilm is what? More broader. Well, ilmu and ilm is the definition of ilm. Ma'rifatul ma'lumi. It is to know. ما من شأنه أن يعلم that which its matter is for you to know. علم means معرفة to is to know that which needs to be known. Okay. على ما هو as it is به في الواقع as it is in in its reality. والجهل and ignorance is what? تصور الشيء is perceiving something على خلاف opposite to what? ما هو that which it is في الواقع in reality. So the Sheikh, he defined when he defined ignorance, he defined one type of the types of ignorance because ignorance is two types. He defined one of them. He defined جهل مركب. In Imam Abi Ma'ali al-Juwayni, he defined jahal murakkab, the compound ignorance. Are you with me? Good. Abdullah ibn Salih al-Fawzan, sharh, we're going to take. We're going to take. Al-muradu bil-fiqhi huna. The fiqh, he means here, Abu Ma'ali al-Juwayni, he means fiqh here, al-ma'na al-shar'i. He means the technical definition of it. So when he's comparing between fiqh and ilm, he's, he's comparing between the technical definition of fiqh and knowledge. اللغوي, not the linguistic meaning. Why? لِأَنَّ because al-fiqh fi istilah because fiqh in its technical definition is what? مَعَرِفَةُ الْأَحْكَامِ الشَّرْعِيَةِ because fiqh in its technical definition is ma'rifatu al-ahkam al-shar'iyya al-muktasabatun bi adillatiha tafsiliyya we took when we were talking about it there kama taqaddama as we took before wal-ilmu and knowledge is a'ammu minhu is more broader more encompassing than fiqh li'annahu because knowledge يصدق على العلم بالتفسير. You can say تفسير is not علم. والحديث you can say is علم. والنحو نحو grammar you can say is علم. والبلاغة you can say is علم. وغير ذلك أن أذن ذات. Whereas that's not called فقه. فقه is a branch from knowledge. فصار الفقه so فقه became أخص من العلم 
Fiqh became more specific than knowledge. So what can you say? You can say, فَكُلُّ فِقْهٍ عِلْمٌ Every fiqh is knowledge, is ilm. وَلَيْسَ كُلُّ فِقْ عِلْمٍ But not every ilm is what? <coughs> Fiqhan is a fiqh. Okay? That's the first part of what Abi Mu'ali al-Juwaini said. Al-fiqh akhassu min al-ilmi. We took that part. The second one is the definition of ilm. The second part is what? The definition of ilm. The Shaykh defined ilm as what? Ma'arifatul ma'lumi. It is to know that which is needed to be known. Ala ma huwa. So there is three things. Abi Mu'ali al-Juwaini alayhi rahmatullah. Huh? Oh, sorry, he said two points. He defined knowledge with two, two points. When he defined ilm, he defined it with what? Two qaid, two points. But it should have been three, and inshallah we will add the third one. What is the first thing? Ma'arifa is to know. What does ma'arifa mean? Ma'arifa means al-idraq. It is to know. It is to comprehend. Al-ma'lumi. The thing that you want to know. This. This is the ma'lum. And what I'm going to use to, in order to know is called what? Because this is the thing I need to know, right? So this is called the ma'lum. Good. And what I'm going to do is I'm trying to comprehend what this thing is. So I look at it. Ah. This is called the ma'lum. Very good. And knowledge is what? That your comprehension of the thing that you're comprehending is as it is. Ala ma huwa. So my comprehension and this thing are, are, are intact. So my comprehension is an opposite to what? Is not opposite to the to the thing. That's the first thing. When you say, so the so the sorry that was so the, the first part is ma'rifatul ma'lumi. It is first of all. So how many things did he mention? Two. What are the two things Abu Ma'ali and Jaini mentioned? Ma'rifa, comprehension. And it's consistent with what you're what you're comprehending. Are you with me? The first part, the first part of what I said, uh, the Sheikh said, which is ma'rifa tul ma'lumi, comprehending the thing that you want to know, which is the first thing. What are you trying to do? You're comprehending the thing that you're looking at. One. You're comprehending it very well, trying to understand it. This, what leaves? Lack of comprehension. Sahih? Lack of comprehension of this. That's called jahlun basit. The opposite to the first part of knowledge is what? Knowledge has what? Idraq is the comprehension of something to what you're trying to comprehend. Are you with me? That's the first part. What is the opposite to it? Lack of comprehension. For example, you come to a person and you say to him, Brother, Arifi nadba, define for me what mandub is. And he says to you, La adri. He tried to look at nadb and comprehend what it is. His brain has no understanding and comprehension of what he's trying to look at. Does that make sense? That's called jahlun basir. And the answer that comes from that person is what? I haven't I haven't comprehended it. La adri. There's no comprehension in my mind regarding it. That is called jahlun basir. Good. The second qaid, the second qaid, which is the second part of the definition of what, which, which is what? Ala ma huwa, as it is. So the first one was you comprehending a thing. The second one is as it is. As it's as it is. Um, and this one it brings out you comprehending something different to what it is. And that's called Jahlum Murakab. And the Sheikh defined it for you by saying, Jahlum Murakab means what? Tasawur shay'i. It is to picture something. Or it's to perceive something. Ala khilafi, opposite to what? Ala khilafi ma huwa bihi. Opposite to what it is. Are you with me? 
وفي بعض النسخ and in some of the publication of this book the way it came out it says على خلاف ما هو عليه في الواقع and that is وهذا أوضح that's more clearer which is what which is what that the perception or the comprehension it is different to what it is different to the reality of the thing that you're comprehending so what is the difference between jahl murakkab and jahl basit the jahl murakkab there is no there's no comprehension in his brain at all jahl basit he has nothing in his brain when you ask him la adri i don't know he says to you the other one who's jahl murakkab what will he say to you i know no he said i know i know what it is and then you ask him what it is and then he'll say to you this is a khaki so is there a comprehension is there a comprehension in his head yes but is that comprehension uh, is it intact with the reality of the thing no it's not so here i have to stop and explain a matter to you which is the ulama of mantiq they talk about kutub al-ilm al-mantiq when you look into it you find something that they talk about called tasawwur and tasdiq tasawwur and tasdiq and you have to distinguish between two these two it helps you tasawwur means and inshallah when i explain it and define it you guys might be able to uh, uh, able to tell me the english meaning for it tasawwur means i know what tasawwur means tasawwur means perception tasawwur means perception that one's simple and what is the word tasawwur in arabic what is the definition for it it is al idraq it is when a person he has a image in his head al khali an al hukm but it's far from what and it's away from any ruling are you with me give you an example it's it has you, there's no ruling attached to the the thing that you have that you have pictured in your head i'll give you an example brother saad somebody comes up to me and says to me abd rahman all these brothers that are sitting here my first time oh i've met you guys once before all of you guys i've met you guys all once before and you all told me your names so somebody asks me and says to me where saad and i point my finger at saad and said did i perceive him did i did i image saad correctly according to the name he of his good but is there a ruling on saad for me in the sense where If you asked me is Sa'ad a truthful person, an honest person, a happy person, a person who has anger management issues, the answer is no, I can't. I only have tasawwur on him in my head regarding him. Or I have in the sense where I know how he looks like. Faqat. As for anything beyond that, I have what? I don't have anything of it. Tasdiq is what? Tasdiq is a picture with a ruling. So Saad I pictured him and I also have a ruling which is he's lazy. Yeah, see that. I'd say that. So I I have a picture in my head. Or somebody asks me Should say it. Yeah, yeah. So it is um a perception are you with me so there's a idrak or a, a comprehension i have of sad now i also have a ruling attached are you with me i have a a ruling attached to it that's called tasdiq لذلك they combine it in one line of poetry by saying al idrak min ghayri qada'in tasawwur wa ma'ahu tasdiq wa dhaka mushtahar So that is important that you know it. So what's the difference? The that the, the one both of them what do they have? Picture. They both of them have a picture in their heads. <coughs> Are you with me? The one that has a picture in his head and also has a rolling with it. Huh? That one is different from the one that just has a picture and no no ruling to it mm, important the jahl murakkab he's one who has what one who مثلا you asked him hal tajuzu salah you ask him 
to a person who's jahl muraqab. You, you say to him, is it permissible to pray a prayer huh, with tayammum? To pray a salah with tayammum. When there's no water. You ask a person who's jahl muraqab, you say, Akhi, there's no water. I don't have water. Am I allowed to do tayammum and then pray? He says to you, la yajuzu. Am I allowed to juzu? It's not permissible. This person, he's called jahlum muraqab. He won't say to you, la adri. He won't say to you, he won't say la adri. This is called jahlum muraqab. What, what does muraqab mean? We're going to explain to you. Summiya jahlum muraqab. It was called jahlum muraqab. لأن صاحبه because the individual يعتقد الشيء يعتقد الشيء he believes in something ويتصوره and he perceives something so he has a ruling and what does he have and he has a perception now that ruling it can be according to the reality and it can also be not according to the reality but he has a perception and what comes with that perception a belief, a ruling that comes with it. He will say to you, later, Jews. Good. ويتصور, and he perceives it على خلاف ما هو عليه, opposite to what it is. I'm a different to the reality of the matter. فهذا جاهل, that is an ignorant person. ويعتقد, but he believes ويعتقد أنه يعتقد على ما هو عليه. He believes that he believes huh, that it is what the reality of the matter is. So he believes that he's believing is in accordance to the reality of the matter. And that's a second ignorance. And then how many ignorance are there in him? فَفِيهِ جَهْلَانِ to ignorance. جَهْلٌ بِالْمُدْرَكِ Ignorance in the perception. وَجَهْلٌ And also a what? Ignorance بِأَنَّهُ جَاهِلٌ Ignorant not knowing that he's ignorant. So there's two. That's why it's called compound ignorance. When the poet he said, Jahilta walam tadri bi anaka jahilu. You are ignorant and you don't know that you're ignorant. Famalli, who can who can bring it to your attention? Bi an tadri bi anaka la tadri. Who can bring it to your your attention and make you know <laughs> that you don't know? Because I can at least teach you then in it. I can work with you. And I can make you understand. So Jahilta. You're ignorant, but in reality, you don't know that you're ignorant. Ah, uh, who can only come and bring to your attention that you don't know and that you need to... That, because what would happen? At least then you'll go and try to find out what it is. One of the things, brothers, that causes or brings a person to fall into this form of jahl, which is called jahl al-murakab, is when he tries to take knowledge from other than a shaykh or a person of knowledge. He takes it from books, or he takes it from the internet, or he takes it from a friend of his. That person, he falls into jahl al-murakab. the poet, he said, Anyone who takes on knowledge without a teacher, without a sheikh, that person will be misguided from the straight path. And matters will mix up on him. Matters, they will all mix up on him. And it will all go wrong in his brain. Uh, matters. Hatta until yakunu adalla min tumul hakimi. Until he becomes more ignorant than tumul hakim. Until he becomes more ignorant than tumul hakim. Who's tumul hakim? Tawm al-Hakim, they said he was a man who was very jahil, very jahil. A jahil was jahil al-murakab. And the poet carries on saying, the poet will explain to you who he was. Tasaddaqa bil banati ala al He gave women a sadaqa to men. Sadaqa. Men who are not married. He said, that, he, said to the men that were, he said to the men that were married, your wives, sometimes allow these brothers to take your wife. and Ha, tasaddaq, sadaqa. Love for your brother, what well, you love for yourself. And do sadaqa. And then read the ayats of sadaqa. Tasaddaqa bil banati. He gave the women in charity. Ala uh, rijali to men to come in zina with them. Yuridu bidaka jannati na'imi. And his intention was to get jannah. Jahl, murakkab. Walidhalika. Walidhalika once they said. Uh, they said, they said. His donkey spoke. 
Tumul Hakim his donkey spoke. And they said that his donkey said, Lo ansafati dahr. If the time was just, if it was a just time that we live in today, kuntu arkabu, I would have climbed, I, Tumul Hakim would have been my riding beast. Ha. He would have been my, my riding beast. Why? Li'annani jahilun basitun. Because my jahil is jahilun basit. Ah. When you ask me something, I say, la adri. I'm a donkey, I say, la adri. Wa sahibi jahilun murakabun. And my friend is what? Jahilun murakab. His ignorance is what? Jahilun uh, murakab. <coughs> so what happens? Fafihi jahlani. There are two ignorance present in the person. Jahilun bil mudraki. Wa jahilun bi annahu jahilun. Jahil in the perception and jahl on the fact that he's ignorant. As for the person who has jahl on basit, what's his answer? He only has one issue. Basit, by the way, it's the opposite to murakab. It's the opposite to compounded. It just means singular ignorance. Meaning, he has not perceived anything. The definition of jahl, uh, sorry, uh, ilm, I think the best definition that was given for the definition of knowledge was the definition Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen mentions in his usul min ilm al-usul. Uh, which is that uh, It is to perceive something as it is with a perception that is with certainty. So perceiving something as it is with certainty. So that's why I said the third point that the Sheikh didn't mention, Abu Ali al we're going to add it to it. We're going to add it on for him, which is what? Uh, he, did, he didn't mention that it has to be done with what? Jazima. Are you with me? It has to be done with conviction. As they say, unwavering conviction. That the person, he believes in this, that is 100%. So those three, when those three points are found, then it becomes ilm. Are you with me? What is it? Perception of the matter. Okay? The third one is as it is. And the third one is what? And the third one is with certainty. With certainty. When we said, remember the first part, which one left? The first one we said, it is per comprehending the matter. Uh, comprehending the matter. What left? Jahlun Basid left. When we said, as it is, Jahlun Murakab left. And when we said, the last one, with unwavering conviction, what left? These, these ones are the ones that leave. Shak, Dhan, uh, left. Shak, Dhan, uh, left. And Waham. And Waham. Those three leave. What is Shak? Shak is when something is 50-50 for you. 50-50, what is it? When something is 50-50, it's called, because there's no, like, there's no, that conviction is not there. It becomes shak. The second one is, dhan. Dhan is what? Huh? When it's 90%. When it's, it's more than 50%. 60%, 70%, 80%, 90%. Are you with me? What is that called? That is called dhan. That 90% is called what? That 10% that's left is called waham. That ten percent is called uh, waham. Naam. We'll take all of those. How many do you have in total? If you count, you have six, and they are called the six stages of comprehension. Are you with me? You have ilm. You have the two types of ignorance, and you have the three that I just mentioned. Six in total. So what do you have? You have ilm, you have jahlun basit, jahlun murakab, you should have shak, you should also have dhan, and then you should also have what? Waham. Also have? Waham. Aqsamul ilmi. Types of knowledge. How many types of knowledge are there? Wal ilmu knowledge. والعلم نالج الضروري Before I move on, there's a matter which I need to mention. Which is, some scholars did say that the definition of knowledge should never be used. Knowledge shouldn't be really defined. 
Nobody should take their time out to, and, uh, to define knowledge. Are you with me? There's no need to define knowledge. Knowledge is a... Because to define something is for you wanting to have knowledge of something, correct? So how can you define knowledge and wanting to get knowledge from what you're defining? So it doesn't work like that. When Idalika, they say, a poet said, a man was set a task to go and define the water. They said, go and define what water is. So the poet, they said, فكر طول uh, الليل. All night he, start, he, fed, fed, he thought, he thought, how can he define water? In the morning they want to answer from him. يُعْمِلُ فِكْرَتَهُ To make his brain work and to find out what's the definition. وَفَسَّرَ الْمَاءَ بَعْدَ الْجَهْدِ بِالْمَاءِ But when he woke up in the morning, after a lot of effort that he put into finding the best definition for it, he came, up, he came out and he said, الْمَاءُ هُوَ الْمَاءُ Water. How is water? It's one of those things that the poet said, وَلَيْسَ يَصْحُ فِي الْأَذْهَانِ شَيْءٌ إِذَا احْتَاجَ النَّهَارُ إِلَى دَلِيلِ It is not befitting for the mind if the sun, the day, the daytime requires definition. If it needs to be clarified to the people. I mean, something that's that clear doesn't require a definite, definite. And that is the tariqah Bukhari took. And Imam al-Bukhari in his Sahih, he did not define. Ibn Hajjar, rahimahullah, said, the reason, one of the reasons why he probably didn't define knowledge, because Bukhari has a kitab in Sahih, in Sahih called Kitab al-Ilm. Bukhari has it. Ibn Hajjah said the reason why he didn't define it, the first reason was because ilm is hub. It doesn't re require to be defined. And he also said maybe Bukhari didn't define it because Bukhari's book is not a dictionary. Ah, he doesn't define words. Um, also, the definition of, and when I said that the other definition was better, by Sheikh Ibn Uthaymi's definition was better than the definition of Abi Ali al Juwaini, is because Abi Ali, when he defined it, look what he said. He said, Al ilmu ma'rifati is ma'rifatul ma'lumi. When you're defining something, a word of that word shouldn't enter the definition. Because he said, al ilmu knowledge is what? Ma'rifatul ma'lum. Ma'lum is from knowledge. Because there's, there's that ayn and there's that lam and there's that meme present in that word, ma'lum. So the Arabs, they say that when you're defining something, it shouldn't enter it. It should not enter it. Any word that's rooted from it should not enter the definition of the word that you're defining. That's important. So, that is it. He also, he himself, Abi Ali al Juwaini, he has a bigger book on Usul al Fiqh, which he called it Al Burhan. It's a bigger book than this book that we're reading right now. He also said there is no need for what? For ilm to be defined. For knowledge to be defined, he mentioned that. Good. Aqsamul ilmi, the types of knowledge there are. Well, ilmu, knowledge, ilm. Al-daruriyu, there's two types of knowledge. There's knowledge that shall, which is called ilmu al-daruri and ilmu al-muktasab. Knowledge is two types. Ilmu al-daruri and ilmu al-muktasab. The shaykh will define to us what they both, what they both mean. Ilmu al-daruri, ma la yaqa'u. Ilmu al-daruri is what? Ma la yaqa'u, that which does not fall or does it occur another in with observation and istidlal and looking for evidences. Ilm al-daruri is something that you don't need to observe. And you don't need to look for evidence for it. Okay? It doesn't require observation. And inshallah ta'ala later we're going to take that the word nadar, it happens in two meanings. Nadar, which is ru'yatul ayn, the seeing of the eye. And it can also mean what? Huh? Ru'yatul fikra, the brain, your 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 obse your thought or something. The ilm al daruri doesn't need you to have any studying and educating yourself on it. It's something if you choose to even if you even choose to make yourself become ignorant of it, you can't. Ah, it's something that no one is able. You know it by way of necessity. That is what this. That's what it, it is. Such as what. كالعلم الواقع it is what it is the knowledge that occurs and it occurs by two ways by the way uh, as he mentions علم الضروري occurs by two ways first one is called كالعلم الواقع بإحدى الحواس الخمس it occurs by the five uh, five feelings they say huh? five senses uh, it occurs by the five senses which are what السمع hearing والبصر and seeing والشم taste smelling uh, 
وَاللَّبْسُ touching وَالذَّوْقُ tasting uh, It occurs through the five t- That knowledge It is what? It's علم الضروري It is what? علم الضروري You know That this person is sad Do you need evidence to, for it to be brought to you that this is sad? Huh? Did you, well, how did you come to know him? Whenever you see him, can anyone open a doubt on you and say, this is not sad? Huh? Do you need uh, external evidences for it? No. <coughs> Good. Also, when you see fire, do you know by seeing fire, do you automatically know that it burns and it's going to hurt? It's very sick. Look at a little child. When he get close to a fire, who taught him? What school did he go to find out that fire burns? Huh? Who? Naam. So we're going to, inshallah. And it also is taken, and how else? Oh, bitawa turi. If it's brought to you by multitude narration. Are you with me? If I came up to you today and said to you, <laughs> there's, no such a, there's no such a thing called Baghdad. It doesn't exist. Ah, it's all made up. Would you believe it? Why? Have you seen Baghdad in your own? It's Mutawat, multitude narration. Who told you that Baghdad exists? You can't put your finger on any particular person. Because it's what? It's, it's a large number. It became too much. You see? Good. As for the second type, it's called Ilm Al-Muqtasab. That was the first type. The second is called Ilm Al-Muqtasab. It's the type of knowledge where you have to go and look for it. You have to go and find out. This occurs through what? Another observation. And, huh? and it occurs by you looking for evidences. And this is what? وَالنَّذَرُ Nadar is what? هُوَ الْفِكْرُ Nadar is here. I told you before. The nadar happens two ways. It's, it could be رُؤْيَةُ ain or a fikr. The nadar here is your, your brain. You have to work your brain. المكتسب, you have to work your brain out. في حال المنظور in the ma- in the thing that you are thinking about. والاستدلال it means استدلال means what? طلب الدليل you have to go and look for evidences. والدليل evidence is هو المرشد it is the guide إلى المطلوب to that which you want to the thing that you are requesting. That's what it means. All of those points we're going to define them one after the other. Inshallah Taala. After the Sheikh defined for us what knowledge was, and we learned what knowledge is, he now moved on to telling us that knowledge is how many types? Two types. Ilm al-daruri and ilm al-muqtasab. You see, but we have to understand here, whose knowledge is he referring to? The khaliq or the makhluq? The makhluq. Allah's knowledge is not called daruri, nor is it called muqtasabu. Ha. So here we're talking about what? Ilm al-makhluq, the knowledge of the creation. Okay, that's the, the two types is us, the creation, not the creator, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And there are two types. The first one is called ilm al-daruri, a knowledge which you learn through necessity. Abdullah ibn Salih al-Fawzan, he says, وَهُوَ it is مَا لَا يَقَعُ عَنْ نَظَرٍ وَاسْتِدْلَالٍ It is something that your brain doesn't have to work for it, and you don't have to go out of your way to look for evidence for it. You don't. وَذَلِكَ and that is, إِذَا كَانَ إِدْرَاكُ الْمَعْلُومِ ضَرُورِيًا And that is if that thing, you got it by way of what? You perceived it by way of necessity. لا يحتاج, it does not require that thing. إِلَى نَظَرٍ وَاسْتِدْلَانٍ It doesn't require you to move your, uh, work your brain and it doesn't require you to go out of your way and look for evidence. Such as what? كَالْعِلْمِ The knowledge بِأَنَّ النَّارَ حَارَ To know that the fire burns. وَأَنَّ الْكَعْبَ And that the Kaaba is what? قِبْلَة الْمُسْلِمِينَ And that the Kaaba is the Qibla of the believers. That's ilm al-daruri for the Muslim. Also, we Muslims, what is also ilm al-daruri for us? وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ That the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم is who? Is the Messenger of Allah. For us is ilm uh, al-daruri. Uh. That should not enter ilm So what happened? The atheists, what did they put, put it in? They put it in ilm al-muqtasab. Uh. And then when they succeeded in that, after bits, what did they put it into? Run. They took it out of knowledge. That's what they did. Uh, and then what did they put it into? Shak. And then finally, what did they do it? Wahm. Bit by bit. For us, 
it stays at the first time, which is ilm al-daruri. It's a knowledge. If we even want to, as a Muslim, if I want to even disbelieve in Muhammad Sallallahu ever existence, my brain can't allow me. It's like me trying to convince myself, put your finger into this fire, it won't burn you. I can't, I can't. My mind will not let me. This knowledge is forcefully. Can you make yourself ignorant of the fire not burning? Of the fire burning, sorry. And say, you know what? It doesn't burn. I don't believe it burns. You can't. Now, مثلاً, that is, وَمِنَ الْعِلْمِ And the knowledge, الَّذِي لَا يَحْتَجُ إِلَى إِلَى نَظَرٍ It doesn't require your brain to move. So remember this, all the time underline these two. It لَا يَحْتَجُ إِلَى نَظَرٍ It doesn't require another, and it doesn't require what? إِسْتِدْلَال This, علم الضروري is those two. What does the another mean? As I said to you, I, it is that your brain doesn't have to uh, think. Okay? Um, what about istidlal? Do you have to go out of your way and look for evidences? No, you don't. And it happens by two ways. It occurs by two ways. One is what? As I said, بِإِحْدَ الْحَوَاسِ الْخَمْسَةِ ظاهرة, The five senses, like hearing, seeing, touching, smelling, and tasting. فَإِنَّهُ يَحْصُلُ الْعِلْمَ بِهَا Knowledge can occur by one of those without you having to what? Be doing another, without, you don't have to work out your brain. And you don't have to also what? And you don't have to what? And you don't have to look for evidences. For example, if you hear Sa'ad's voice, huh? if you hear Sa'ad's voice, would you know that it's his voice? Would you know it's his voice? Sa'ad's voice, you heard it? Ah, Sa'ad, Sa'ad. Um, would you say to yourself, that's, a, that's the sound of a horse? Yeah. You would. Yeah. It hit your ear and it became ilm al-daruri. You have to go out of your way and say, Sa'ad, sit down, make that noise again. Nah, and, 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 or go out of your way and research. Huh? No, nah, you don't. Or you see a white color. Or you saw a white color. Do you need to go and find evidences that this is why and what not? No. Oh, mess said just meant, oh, you touched something. Somebody said, turn around and they made you touch something. And it was water. They put your hand into water. Can you say that was fire? Huh? Ilm al You will know it. If somebody made you touch something hard and something soft, can you tell the difference? You can. That's ilm al That is also all of it. Or somebody made you smell something. They closed your eyes from you and they told you to smell something. Ah. You can say this is that was a perfume, or atar, or that was what? And something that smelled bad, something that rotten food. Ilm al Or somebody put something in your mouth and made you taste it. Now I'm going to ask you a question. If some, each has, each sense, does it necessarily allow you to recognize it by another way? So for example, if I made you touch there's some food if you look at it it looks so juicy and nice and it tastes what from the eyes what does it look like it looks like this is a ju- nah, this is nice food صحيح? and then when you taste it it is the most sour huh sour your ears will sour very sour but when it when you looked at it you thought it would be sweet and then what did it turn out as to be Sour. So all of those are that every, all of that which comes through those means is called ulm al daruri Ilm al-tawatur, for example. Tawatur, we took it. Tawatur is the knowledge that comes to you through a multitude, multitude narration. We say, khabaru jama'a, it's a group of a large amount of people. Yastahilu tawatur ala al kadib And it's impossible for these people to agree upon this issue. A Chinese guy tells you about Baghdad. One in Australia tells you about Baghdad. One in America tells you about Baghdad. One in England tells you about Baghdad. One from Baghdad tells you about Baghdad. Can you not, he said, oh, you, oh, you, you guys, you, you, you guys all agreed upon this lie. Does that make sense? La, all of those people cannot lie. Tawatur. It is. That is important. The second type is called Ilmun Nadari. It's both names are used. It's called Ilm al-Nadari or Ilm al-Muqtasab. And it occurs with the two that the other one doesn't occur with. It is that which occurs. 
it requires from you what? It requires for your brain to work and it, look, it requires for you to look for evidences. We will stop there, inshallah, subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka